Do you and your climbing partners do close call assessments? Could this practice save you or someone you care about one day? Hello again, I'm Jason. May is Mental Health Awareness Month, and we dedicate that month to talking about some of the mental aspects of climbing. We are wrapping this month up with a discussion of close call assessments. The Federal Railroad Administration, the Federal Aviation Administration, and NASA, the National Aeronautics and Space Administration, all do close call assessments. Healthcare organizations, IT departments, and now some guide services do this too. So, is it something we should do after our climbing trips? Most climbers are familiar with accident assessments. Where I'm from, we get those from the annual publication Accidents in North American Climbing, After Action Reports from Search and Rescue Teams, the Sharp End Podcast, and the like. While these are helpful, they are limited by a, thankfully, comparatively small sample size. And because these events ended in accidents, they are high-consequence events. That ignores the whole universe, larger universe, I might add, of near misses that could have led to high consequences, but for a quick action or even just a stroke of luck. With larger samples comes more reliable data. Now, to be clear, not every climbing trip will have not only a close call, but a close call that we perceive. You can watch another video we did about the feedback trap and how the fact that we've maybe been able to avoid significantly bad consequences creates bias in our thinking. There's a link in the description. But if we do perceive a close call, we should probably talk about it. The first step of a close call assessment is to identify the close call. In organizations, that's usually against a written standard, such as a breach to a certain layer of an IT firewall. But for climbers who maybe climb with different partners for different climbs, it is probably enough to simply ask if anyone thought there was a close call. Maybe give some examples from different categories. Rock fall, climber fall, marginal gear, being out longer than we thought, weather, an iffy decision, poor communication, maybe there are others. Now we need to investigate. Again, in a big corporation, that's one thing. Among climbing partners, that's probably asking each climber what they were thinking, saying, and perceiving when the close call happened. From there, we can try to identify root causes. There are lots of tools to do this, but maybe the simplest is the five whys exercise. This is what it sounds like, asking why at least five times. I didn't like the choice to go straight up the ridge rather than traverse around the loose scramble. Why did we choose to do that? Because the rock looked solid and we didn't know it was loose until we were committed. Why? because we didn't think about becoming committed on such easy climbing. Why? Because we didn't read any trip reports. Why? Because we threw this trip together yesterday evening. Why? Because that's when we both found out we could get off to climb. So what's the real root cause here? A hastily planned trip, not the choice to hug the ridgeback. Now we need a corrective action. Maybe we should have a few trips planned and at the ready that are seasonally appropriate or some such. That's probably it for the assessment on the day, but the practice of mitigating close calls and potentially accidents doesn't stop there. We need to hold ourselves accountable. What is the action plan? Who is making those predetermined trip plans? When will they have them done? How will they be shared? And in a month, when Buddy 1 calls up Buddy 2 and says, but I don't want to go do any of those pre-planned trips right now, Will one buddy remind the other of the results of their close call assessment and their shared agreement? Which brings me to my final point. For this kind of thing to stick, the team needs to celebrate and therefore encourage this honest communication. That is done in the moment by not overtly disagreeing with someone's perception that they experienced a close call. It's done at the end of the initial conversation by thanking those who spoke up. And it's done, yes, after the fact, by honoring our agreements. Have you had a close call out on a climb? If you feel comfortable, tell us what you learned in the comments. Thanks for watching this video. Please like, subscribe, and share if you want to support us. For more information, you can go to our website at www.shortguysbetaworks.com. You can check out last week's video about low probability and high consequence risks, the kind that demand we get larger samples by examining close calls too, or maybe take a look at our entire Mental Health Awareness Month series.
We'll see you next week and keep on getting more out of that big outside.